Learnability. This is going to be a reasonably short section, but it's an incredibly important section as well, certainly for software today. One of the things that is uh, true really of, of most software is that it does, when users come to use the product for the first time, it normally does require some degree of learning to happen as the user becomes familiar with the functionality in that software and how it operates and how it works and things like that. And how we gain that learning is really through experience. We use our software and through using it, we learn about it and we become better at it. So when we're thinking then about software and we're defining lear learnability, it's a measure of the extent to which simply by using the software that we can understand and improve our efficiency in what it does and we can do that effortlessly in a short period of time. They're all characteristics and of something that is high levels of learnability. It's a really, really very important metric today. Um, if I think back to, 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 to when you know, I was a PhD student learning to program, um, a Borland C++ compiler at that point, it came along literally with a bookshelf's worth of books of manuals that you were expected to, to go through and to read and to consult. That doesn't happen nowadays. And in fact, anything that says up front, oh, we're going to have to put you in a training course so you can learn how to use this software, that's unlikely to represent good, successful software. So there's an in assumption today that it doesn't matter what type of software you're talking about, you can just take it, start to use it, and become better with it. And that's one of the key reasons why software has been so successful. So when we're thinking about our users then, they expect just to be able to pick up a piece of software, to be able to use it, and to improve how they use it easily, effortlessly, through that use. And if we can do that, that's an incredibly powerful element then of improving the usability of that piece of software. It's also quite a challenging thing to bring about through how we design. For collecting learnability data, that thankfully is actually very easily done. So it may be hard to do, but we can measure it quite easily. And in essence, learnability is based on a number of the underpinning metrics that we've looked at. So that can be things such as time on task, the numbers of errors, task success rate, all of those different types of things. Anything that we feel provides us with a measure of efficiency, we can use then to measure learnability. And learnability is simply nothing more than taking a measurement, for example, of time on task and tracking how it changes over time. So over time, we would expect the users to improve in terms of these metrics, that their task success rate increases, that they become quicker and more efficient at completing their tasks. And by measuring changes over time, that gives us a bit of an insight into how learning is happening as the user uses the product. So as learning occurs, the efficiency of whatever metric we're using, we probably want to use several metrics to be honest and measure them, they should also improve over time. There's a few interesting elements in this here in, in as far as, well, if we're going to get the user to do something repeatedly and to measure how they do it in those different instances and then track changes over time, what is that over time bit? Where we can, it should relate to the frequency with which we would expect the user to use the software in the real world. So if, if a user would be inclined to use this website or this particular package maybe once a month, then ideally in terms of her testing, we should test the user's ability uh, and see how it changes once a month. Quite often we can't actually do that. And so there's a certain degree of artifice here in terms of our experimental setup and how much time we do have available between our individual tests. You might do them all in the same session, sort of get the user to do it at the start, do something in the middle, then get them to repeat the first section. You might do it from one day to the next day. But it's important then just to understand the potential limitations then that the, 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 the period on which we sample and measure efficiency as our metric of learnability here, 
we do need to be careful and think about how does that relate to actual likely patterns of use from our users. For analysing and presenting learnability data, again, it's quite straightforward. The interpretation of the data is where we can glean a number of, of interesting aspects. Um, as we said, basically, we are presenting different measurements and we're showing them over time. You can see that on the graph. So here we might have the, the mean task time um, for, um, for, for doing a particular uh, process. And we're sort of tracking then for a number of different users over time how that changes. So um, initially may start off by you know between 45 and 50 seconds. Then eventually after a number of different test run was down to sort of about 25 or so seconds. So we can easily plot then that time and that change in that metric over time. Whenever we and and there's a few assumptions here. If we plot this and we get to see it leveling out so that from one task to the next task it's all roughly the same, there doesn't seem to be any notable changes, um, at that point we can reasonably safely assume then that the users learned whatever they are going to learn for the setup that we've given. It doesn't mean they've reached optimal performance because they've been using the software as we have presented it to them. And we may have a better way of presenting it or a better way of instructing or encouraging the user to think about what they do that potentially could have given them even better performance. But for the setup that we used, they've reached their optimum performance inside that. And the difference then between the, the starting measure of whatever level of efficiency we're using and the finishing, that sort of delta from the start to the end gives us a crude understanding of the amount of learning that needed to happen. It, it, it is crude because we're assuming that changes in efficiency directly relate to the volume or the amount of learning. But it's, it's an okay proxy then to think about it. Certainly if we're comparing across multiple tasks, we may find that in some tasks there's a very significant increase in efficiency that's observed. And the length of time that it then takes to go from an initial level down to what the steady state is, that also gives us an indication then of how long that learning happens over. Now, using that information, we, we can think about elements around, well, are we happy with this? How much learning has occurred? Do we feel that we could improve some elements of it in terms of tweaking elements that may let the user increase even further in terms of their efficiency or for it to happen more frequently. And quite often there, given that data, it's useful then to follow up with the users in terms of some specific questions or queries around trying to get a bit of an insight into what the data um, is showing. So that's all I want to say about learnability. It's an important metric and it's a good one to, to think deeply about. It brings us to the end of our performance metrics or our coverage of performance metrics. The next section we're going to go on to after this is looking at user reported metrics where we will be asking the user specifically to give us information as opposed to getting them to do tasks and activities and then measuring or monitoring aspects of that. But the two things fit together really well and quite often we want to use both. We want to measure aspects of what they do and we also want them to, to ask the users to answer questions that we've provided because that gives us a, a richer set of data overall.